All right, today I'm doing Hex's playlist. That is all I know about this fucking video. He just said, do, write this and do that. So Hex's playlist. It doesn't even fit. I'm gonna compensate for a little room. My life's playlist, and I hate to write this one down because I don't listen to it ever, but it is the thing that got me into hip hop. Growing up in Mexico, obviously, mainstream media isn't what it is. I mean, obviously, the internet didn't even fucking exist over there. Digital cable didn't exist, exist back then. I don't think, I think it was like less than four, I think it was 360p. Just to give you an idea, nothing better, not 480, not 1080, none of that, not 720, didn't exist. So, I Size Baby, because it introduced me to uh, rap. So, if I was to say my life's playlist that describes my life, that would be the first one, because rap ended up becoming... A big part of my life. All right, stop, collaborate, and listen. I sit back with my brand new inventions. On the same year, I discovered that I liked girls. And there used to be a Spanish rock band called Hombres G, hey, or the G-Man. Wow. Think they were saying that because of the G-Spot? Holy shit, eight-year-old me. I mean, 38-year-old. No, I'm kidding. Uh, okay, so um, it's a song about some dude lost his girlfriend to some dude in a Ford Fiesta in a, in a yellow jersey. All my Mexican brethren out there understand what I'm saying. Uh, in, in high school, I don't remember what grade, maybe junior year, I discovered Bone Thugs and Harmony. I was playing basketball and then I found a walkie talkie and nobody else was in the gym. So I'm like, all right, well I have something to listen to on the way home. And I grabbed my Walkman it had a cassette in there, and then I put it on, I pressed it, and it was this amazing, amazing, like, beat that was Momurda, and then I walked home listening to it, and then from there on, I fell in love with Bone Fox and Harmony. And then, uh, because of Bone Thugs and Harmony, the next one that I would put on my playlist is Notorious Thugs, which is Bone Thugs and Biggie. It's Bone and Biggie, Biggie. Armed and dangerous, and too many can bang with us. Straight up weed, no angel dust. Label us, notorious. Scrambling, gambling, up in restaurants with mandolins and violins. We just sitting here trying to sit and try not to win. High off weed and lust gin, so much smoke need oxygen. Something. Armed and dangerous, ain't too many can bang with us. Straight up weed, no angel dust. Label us, notorious. Uh, protect your neck, Wu-Tang Clan. Uh, Wu-Tang Clan would then go on to change my life. Even though Wu-Tang came before that, I didn't really know how passionate I was gonna become around not mainstream hip hop. Um, I think, I think Wu-Tang sort of hit the most mainstream because it, it wasn't just about the black kids, it was about the black kids, the Mexicans, the Puerto Ricans, the white boys, the everything. Wu-Tang was worldwide and that's what, like, it was true hip hop. You know, not this cat in the hat ass rapper. You Dr. Seuss motherfuckers. First things first, man. You f with the worst. I'll be sticking pins in your head like a f nurse. I'll attack any n slack in this map. Because of that and understanding real hip hop, I sort of went on this sort of discovery. And I discovered a rapper who was around the same time that Wu Tang released their, their same album, 1993. This uh, Brooklyn born Jewish dude named Aesop Rock uh, started you know, rapping. And he went on to years later, I think a decade, as recent as last year, they still have him as the most versatile and he uses the most words out of the dictionary, more than Shakespeare. Yeah, most lyrical. To the human of an aggravated breed via the study of post adolescent agitated seeds. Half the patients waste themselves prior to commencement, so I focus on the urban. 9 to 5 or Santhem was at the time where I was doing the 9 to 5 grind and it was sick because there's a verse in there that changed literally my life. It says, we the American working population hate the fact that eight hours a day is wasted on chasing the dream of someone that isn't us. Now, we may not hate our jobs, but we hate jobs in general that don't have to do with fighting our own causes. We, the American working population, hate that nine to five, day in and day out, while we'd rather be supporting ourselves but being paid to perfect the passive that we have harbored based solely on the fact that it makes us, or it makes us smile because it sounds dope. Just creating dope shit will pay more than any job ever could. So, in theory, why make $100,000 on a job you hate when you can make 50 and be the happiest you could ever be? That changed my life forever. Um, I was really into battle rap in the 90s. 
Uh, freestyle, not what it is today, even though I'm, I'm warming up to what it is today, the, you know, the king of the dot and all that stuff. Uh, cliche by Quell. The wordplay in that shit is insane. The battle rap, I mean, it's from the 90s, so you hear a lot of you know, derogatory terms from all angles. But it's the wordplay school. See, Quell's way past math to drop text on future prospects. Never got toys like Christmas in the projects. You rock sets his plate as uh, Ghost Rider. You guys know this song. If you guys watch my vlogs, is the ending of it. It is the first time that I ever loved a song so much that I can hear it nonstop without any lyrics in it. It is an incredible masterpiece by RJD2, who actually was crew with uh, Aesop Rock. Little known fact. And uh, another one. This is my favorite song in the world, I think. Like, I listen to this three times a week. Uh, a Thousand Deaths by Aesop Rock. It's fucking amazing. Yo, Incredible work. I saw the run I cross and murder. Circling by my turrets, slip the spiral and banish the down a hide. My ruby glass glaze specs, they put the trade of market. Last but not least, and I mean this, it's miscellaneous. Um, Non-hip-hop genre, non-rap uh, genre, non-gangster uh, rap genre. I think this is like the closest thing that you get besides rock and roll up here. But the miscellaneous one, like right now, I'm, I'm on this crazy binge on Queen. So my, my parents didn't listen to Mexican music, even though they're both Mexican, even both, they both grew up in Mexico. My mom listened to uh, smooth jazz, Yanni, uh, what's the guy with the flute? Um, what's the guy with the flute, Maddie? The guy with the flute with the hair? Kenny G, thank you, good shit. It's a saxophone? I think so. Okay, well, so my mom listened to that. My dad is a rock and roll buff. Black Sabbath, uh, Air Supply, like classic rock, like that's my dad's shit, and Queen, was what he used to, like, he had all the albums of Queen growing up. So right now, um, Can't Stop Me Now is, like, my shit. Like, I listened to that. I, like, the other day when we rode the, the Super 73 to, to the diner, that's what I had in my ears, and I felt alive. So, yeah, this is my life's playlist. I suggest you listen to all of them except for De Vuelve a Mi Chica, because you don't speak Spanish, and Ice Ice Baby, because it literally wasn't anything, nothing, except the fact that it got so big and it crossed so many boundaries and borders that it got to me in Mexico and that introduced me to rap. And then from there, it was a rap.